Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I am starting what I hope is a new series on the channel and we are going to be taking some of my favorite shows, some of your favorite shows, putting them through their paces and performing a little test on them. And the test we're going to be doing is the Bechdel test. If you've never heard of it, don't worry, I will explain everything. And the show that we're going to be covering today, doing the test on, is The Office. And The Office is one of the most successful shows of all time. It even was the most streamed show in 2020, even though there hasn't been a new episode in over 10 years. It's a brilliant show, some of the best television writing, performances, it's amazing. And it also produced one of my favorite television writers, Mindy Kaling, so it's a brilliant show. And we are gonna be seeing how an episode does with the Bechdel test. So what is the Bechdel test? It was developed by American cartoonist, Alison Bechdel in 1985. And it was a cartoon in a feminist newspaper. And I'll put it on the screen so you can follow along with the explanation. Basically, it follows two female characters that are talking about the test. One of the women says to the other, I only go and see movies if they meet the test. And the test has three rules. One, there has to be at least two female characters. Two, they have to have a conversation at some point. Three, the conversation has to be about something other than a man. And a lot of people, including myself, adapt the, the women have to have a name to apply. And that is the test that we're going to be doing today on an episode of The Office. So normally the Bechtel test is applied to film, but as I said, we're adapting it for television. So we're going to take an episode and look at it through this lens. And as I said, I've chosen The Office for the first one. And the episodes I chose were the fifth season premiere, Weight Loss, and I used parts one and two. It's the episode where, spoiler alert, Pam and Jim get engaged as I feel this was really peak office content for when it was airing because it had started to get big ratings, you know, award winning, stuff like that. There certainly are other episodes that I would describe as my favorite. Like I think Dinner Party is probably my favorite episode, but in terms of timeline and everything like that, I think that this was a good choice as a lot of the writers describe this episode as what the show was kind of going towards from the beginning. So the big question, did the season five premiere of The Office pass the Bechdel test? So part one, we of course know the show passes this. There are way more than two named female characters. So check for the first part. So part two, do any of these female characters have a conversation with each other? You will be surprised to hear that in those two episodes, there are only two conversations between female characters and they are very, very short. There's one other where Kelly shouts at Holly. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone, but that I don't count that as a conversation because Holly does you know like there's no back and forth like it's just Kelly shouting that so the two points where two women speak to each other is Holly and Angela fighting about Kevin whenever Angela's telling Kevin off about him fucking up so they have like an exchange of heated words. Numbers from the sales report and type them into a master spreadsheet. A GP monkey could do it. I do not understand why you can't do it. No, you do not talk to him like that. But he's an idiot. Hey. He is not an idiot. Thank you, Holly. He is mentally challenged. But it doesn't past the third part, they're talking about Kevin, that's the argument. Obviously it's not a love interest, but it's still, they're talking about a man, so that doesn't count. The only other time female characters speak to each other 
is in the party planning committee when Phyllis, Angela, and Holly are discussing Stanley's birthday. So again, they're discussing Stanley, a man, again, a not a love interest, but still, they're discussing him. Make sure it's the generic one. It's Stanley's favorite. Yeah. So those were the only times in these two episodes where female characters spoke to each other. And because obviously I was hyperly focusing on the show and, and what was happening and which characters were talking to who, it, it really, it was a enormous amount like of male characters speaking to other male characters. And again, I know that those, these are two episodes out of the insane amount of episodes The Office has. And the other thing to say is like, this isn't the greatest measure of how well female characters are treated in television film. Like, of course it's not. It, it's a very particular thing. It's it's something that you're just using as a gauge. And as I said, The Office has some amazing female cast members, female writers. So I don't, you know, I'm not holding anything against the show because these two episodes that I picked, you know, two women didn't speak to each other. But it is just a little gauge and something fun to kind of do and look at. And just really, I, I think it's so interesting in kind of a crazy way how you hear the, the parameters for the test and think, oh, surely everything's hitting that. But it's really surprising how few things in the media do. So again, I still, I love The Office. I think it's a great show. And I just, you know, this is just an interesting thing to do. And I would love to know what other shows you would like me to look at, if you think this is something interesting or not. There is an LGBTQ version of this where basically the character has to have a conversation with someone and they have to have some significant conversation that's not about their sexual orientation and then they also have to be relevant to the plot in a way that if you remove them that it would be a significant you know, occurrence. So I definitely would love to do kind of a combo of the two. So let me know what you think down in the comments section. These videos will be a bit shorter than my usual one because, you know, when it doesn't pass the Bechdel test, then it's, you know, not going to be some super long video. If you want a long video, I did just publish my first video on my second channel, which is linked in the description box down below. So you can go and check that out. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this little fun little delve into the Bechdel test. And as always, you can follow me on social media, check out my Patreon, my merch store. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.